Okay, this is just an update of my top octave DIY synth. As you can see, the case is propped open and everything inside has exploded out all over my desk. Um, so, the last video I showed that I had the oscillators working and dividing up for all the keys. That's some of the problems I figured out. Everything's working fine now. Um, what I've done is added um, an EQ that I've salvaged and I'm using it for all the controls for the sound um, the main voice is on the first pot right now and again um, I have two sets of top octaves so here it is with both you can see they're both coming through um, the third pod here is a low pass, the next one is a high pass. I'll just give you a quick preview of that. I'll prop a key down. So here's the low pass. And because it lowers it so much, um, the mixing op amp, I can raise that up and it'll give me a bit more volume and then the high pass bring the volume back down a bit the high pass put more of a peak on the front not as much as the low pass does but it's enough for a little bit of shaping well, the next thing I did was I pass it through a Smith trigger. Um, just passing one waveform doesn't really do much through it, but if you pass both octaves through at the same time, so if this is my signal, and I send that through a Smith trigger, it kind of merges those ups and downs into one single waveform with. Um, it usually gets the, the note about right, but what happens is the pulse width varies all over the place. It sounds pretty cool. It makes a really fat sound. I just adjust stuff here, and I'll put up just that voice so you can see it. You see the pulse width is jumping all over the place. That's just holding down a single key. And what I've done is I actively mix those. So there's the original voice. That's the original waveform. The next one is through the Smith trigger. There it is. And then I can have any varying degree of the two because they're actively mixed. Bit of low pass filter on there. That makes for a really fat sound, especially on the low notes. Uh, let me see. I don't know if you can even pick that up on the phone. And then the next thing I did was just a simple off on. LFO, um, got the indicator working down here, and then the next pot varies the amount that it affects. So it just basically turns this, the sound on and off. Again, I'll prop a key in place. And put up the amount it affects. phone's picking up all this sound and there it's affecting less now Oop. 
what I'm working on here. I have it bread boarded, but I'm still figuring out the details. It's uh, 4017 um, uh, ripple counter. I think that's what it is. Um, it's controlling a 4066. Switching it off and on. I just have a few of the um, outputs connected, so it's just doing a little pattern right now. I'm probably going to switch out the 4017 with the 4029 so I can link two of them together and get 16 steps. But for now, I've got um, just 10 steps, and it does a little pattern for me. And that's just holding down a single note. And then one thing I found out too was um, connecting a capacitor, I can actually control the, the pulse width on the pulses. So let me prop down the note. So now I've got this pot that will control the pulse width. And you hear it change. There's a narrow pulse width. And then I turn it up, and those will go longer. So if I have a bunch of sixteenth notes, I could create eighths or quarter notes or whatever I wanted just by having a few of them on in a row with this turned up. And that's it, that's where I'm at now.